Is the Quran really the final testament and the infallible word of God? Absolutely not, and I'm going to explain why. Firstly, Muslims and Muslim apologists constantly claim that the Quran has never been revised nor changed. However, there is evidence to prove otherwise. The first of these is the famous sata satanic verses from Surah 53 verse 19 to 20. These verses originally presented a case for the worship of pagan deities as intercessors to Allah. And this was at a time where Muhammad was facing pressure from the Arabs to accept their pagan gods. Muhammad eventually succumbed to the pressure and bowed down and actually worshipped these pagan goddesses. And the fellow Muslims that saw him prostrated themselves in worship to these goddesses as well. Muhammad then later recants his statement and says, I only did that because the devil came in and deceived me. Now, of course, these verses were later revised because they posed a threat to Muhammad's character. Being that Muhammad claimed to be a prophet of God, he should have been able to discern the difference between talking to the devil and talking to an angel of God. Muslim scholars claim that this interaction never happened, but there are writings that we have from 900 AD which record this interaction in detail. And I've spoken about this before in my previous videos, but this is one of the sources. As you can see, um, the pagans heard that Muhammad accepted their gods and he, he, they rejoiced. They were no longer angry with him. However, when Muhammad came and apologized and said that, you know what, it was actually the devil that made me do it, the Arabs were again frustrated with Muhammad. Number two, one of the most ancient versions of the Quran was discovered in Yemen, and these are known as the Sana manuscripts. Dr. Gerd Puin is a renowned Islamicist from Germany, and he conducted profound research on these Sana manuscripts, and what he found contradicts the belief that the Quran has never been changed nor revised. And before I talk about some of the things he found, I just want to quickly state that after finding this and posting his research, the Yemeni authorities actually took away his access. They denied him further access to these manuscripts because they were so angry with him for what he had uh, found in his research. My question is, if you have nothing to hide, then why are you against transparency? If Islam has nothing to hide and it's pure and it's the incorruptible word of God, then why is it so heavily against transparency. Anyways, moving on. Dr. Puin's research really deal with the semantic analysis of the Quran. So just to provide some context, there are only three other ancient copies of the Quran. One is in Uzbekistan, one is in Istanbul, and one is in the British Library in London. And the Sana manuscripts are older than any of these. So one thing that's interesting to note is that these manuscripts were written in a script that originates from the Hejaz region, which is the re region in Arabia where Muhammad lived. Meaning that the Sana manuscripts are not only the oldest to have survived, but they're actually one of the earliest copies of the Quran ever made. So if these manuscripts are one of the oldest versions of the Quran, then the words that they contain are the true messages of Quran because at this point they hadn't undergone any changes or revisions. Now when researchers examined these Sana manuscripts, they found many different variations in dialect and phonetics which essentially didn't make any sense on text. In other words, these manuscripts were pretty much open to the reader's interpretation, so this puts into question the internal integrity of its messages. And this is because on their own they don't have any diacritical marks which are things like accents, they don't have vowel symbols, or any guide as to how it should be read. Essentially, they could only be read by those who already knew it by memory. Now, for those of you who are well versed in semantics, you know that diacritical marks change the meaning and pronunciation of certain words. For example, the word resume looks exactly like the word resume. The only thing that distinguishes resume from resume is the accent aigu on top of the first e. Without this accent, someone would read the word resume as resume. And this was exactly what was happening with these Sana manuscripts. Early Muslims would not have been able to perceive the meaning of certain words, phrases, or sentences without the help of these guides. This means that early versions of the Quran would have been highly unreliable since they were really open to anyone's interpretation. As time went on, the correct reading of the Quran became so unclear that people began to make changes in order to interpret it. 
For example, a man named Hajjaj bin Yusuf was the governor of Iraq in 700 AD and he made changes to the Quran in order to better interpret it. He inserted over 1,000 alifs to the Quranic text and also inserted diacritical marks which obviously changes the meaning and interpretation of the words. So the Quran underwent significant reconstruction and redefinition in order to make it more comprehensible. That means that the Quran we have today, modern versions, are not the original texts. Number three, there are no varying copies today. After the official version of the Quran was released about 29 years after Muhammad's death by Caliph Uthman, Uthman had all other copies burnt because there were already divergent copies circulating around the Islamic empire. This is important because without having other manuscripts to compare from, we have to question the accuracy of the Quran. And this is because the more sources we have to confirm an account, the more reliable that account is. Number four. The main message of the Quran is not well corroborated by historical events. The Quran and the entire foundation of Islam is really built upon this revelation that transpired between Muhammad and this spirit that he saw. This is not historically verifiable in any way. There is no tangible evidence. And actually, most religious texts are like this. Buddhism is based on the religious teachings of Buddha. Hinduism on divine revelation and the philosophies behind that revelation. Most religious texts are similar to the Quran in that they are built on these teachings rather than being built on narratives which can be corroborated. When you look at the Bible in comparison, and by the way, I've already made a video talking about the accuracy of the Bible, so go check that out. When you look at the Bible, it's not just these random teachings. The Bible has stories. Right? There are actual events which actually took place which we can corroborate with archaeological evidence that has been found. The New Testament alone is heavily rooted in eyewitness testimonies. This is extremely important because as I stated earlier, the more sources we have to confirm something, the more accurate that account is. Whereas when you just have one person who claims to have seen an angel and received divine revelation from God himself, it's very hard to prove his story and so it makes his story very questionable. In fact, the Bible is so accurate that it's considered the most accurate historical document. It is actually considered a legitimate historical or literary source from antiquity. The Quran, on the other hand, is not considered a historical nor scientific book. Only Muslims claim that it is, but you will never see a publication from an actual scientific journal or scientific source which affirms that the Quran is a scientific book. Now, am I suggesting that Muhammad lied about his revelation? Possibly. Either that or he received a revelation from a demon. Now, I know a lot of Muslims are going to ask, why would Muhammad lie about receiving this revelation? Well, Muhammad had powerful motives to create this religion which would essentially initiate a revolution. Muhammad had vetted interests in accumulating power and wealth. We know this because Muhammad led military conquests and in these conquests he would spread the messages of Islam. Now, when you examine the nature of this revelation that Muhammad received from the spirit he saw, it was very violent. And when you look at these military conquests that Muhammad led, which were also very violent, you have to question, was Muhammad's message rooted in violence? Early Muslims joined Muhammad in jihad and in completing these military conquests. So Muhammad was able to garner support in his power conquest. Surah 9.5 says to slay pagans. This is a very violent message. The Quran also talks about putting to death those that leave the faith. So here we have Islam starting with a violent encounter between the spirit and Muhammad. We see violently themed messages incorporated in the Quran and through his messages, Muhammad was able to garner support or gain support from early Muslims in his power conquests. Now, I have to be very careful about what I say on this platform because I don't want to get banned, but there is a very common theme here. It seems that Muhammad had a powerful motive to lie, to create this religion, to gain support, to put out messages with a certain theme, and then lead these power conquests in the name of his God. Now, when you look at Christianity, there is no such motive. Jesus was killed for his message, not appraised for it. 
There was no financial gain or increase in power that he experienced. In fact, early followers of Christ were being slaughtered left and right. The early church was being hunted down, especially during the time of Emperor Nero, who would commit the most heinous acts against these uh, Christians, throwing them in lion's den, lion dens, um, throwing them in arenas full of bears. And the inherent message of Christianity is peace. Jesus says to love your enemies. Now, there has been violence committed in the name of Christianity, but these acts are separate from the internal message of Christianity. We see that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and likewise, we are called to be peacemakers. That brings me to point number five. The Quran denies the crucifixion of Jesus. However, we have non-Christian writings which come from the Greek text, the Roman text, the early Jewish text, which confirm the account of Jesus' crucifixion. So how is it that all these different civilizations wrote about the crucifixion of Jesus, the death of Jesus, right when it happened, then you have Islam coming along 600 years later and claiming the whole thing never happened? Come on. So Muslims trust a person who came 600 years later who didn't witness anything rather than actual live witness accounts. Point number six. The Quran has marked scientific errors. Surah 76.2 and 86 verse 5 to 8 claim that sperm comes from the backbone. For obvious reasons, we know that sperm does not come from a man's backbone. Surah 1666 says that milk comes from a cow's intestines and that raw milk is safe for consumption. Milk originates from a cow's mammary glands, not the intestines where waste is processed and stored, and raw milk is also full of bacteria and must be pasteurized before consumption. Surah 2718 claims that ants can speak the human language. Ants can definitely speak by vibrating their abdomen, but they don't speak any human languages. Surah 5149 claims that everything was created in pairs. However, we know that some organisms have only one sex and don't need a partner to reproduce. Surah 4112, 67, 3, 78, verse 12 to 13, 34, verse 6 to 12, all claim that the sky is solid. Clearly, we know that the sky is not solid, right? The atmosphere is the composition of different gases coming together. There are so many more scientific errors, but I'm going to move on for the sake of time. Number seven. In Surah chapter 19, verse 28, the Quran claims that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the sister of Aaron. Here, the Quran is confusing Mary the mother of Jesus, for Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, who lived thousands of years earlier, before Mary. You see, the Quran essentially contains most of the Bible stories in a condensed and altered form. And we know that the Bible has been proven to be accurate through archaeological evidence. So if the Quran was really an extension of the Word of God, why are there so many errors? Now, Muslims will say that the Bible is corrupted. That doesn't make sense. The Bible is the original and the Quran came 600 years later, copying and changing everything. And even if the Bible was corrupted, why would God wait 600 years to change it? Like, does Allah not care about all those people who are reading a corrupted Bible? Or is it that Allah was sleeping for 600 years? This is all irrefutable evidence that the Quran is not the final testament. It is not the word of God. and Therefore, it is not reliable.